Me and Pagey were well oiled by the time Danny Art come down. Well, it was an STD, it wasn't actually a bladder infection. The team manager was so upset, f***ed off me completely that he knew what I'd been up to. They left me there in the car park with my bag. I had to walk back in a Capron Town Centre. I can't even remember if I was in Italy four years ago. It sounds like a scam to me. Gordon's alive! Yeah, and I was like, you get in. You know, your seat's going to end up. So. So this is my Vetus E Summit custom dream build given to me by Vetus very kindly at the end of last year for my 40th birthday, can you believe? They loaded it up with all the people who look after me, Schwalbe tyres front and back, SRAM kit throughout. The one thing that is a bit weird about this bike is the fact that I've never ridden it. It's more like a work of art than a bike for me actually. The Z Fork, 180mm travel. I'd like to be able to tell you what it actually feels like, but I can't, but that'll come because I'm getting my uh, other 21 bikes soon. They've got Fat Creations to, to do this incredible paint job. It's, it's the colors of a Repsol Honda, which is ridden by 28 times world trials champion, Tony Boat, who I, I like. I was gonna say I love, but I like him. You know what I mean? He's amazing on a bike. The one thing about this bike that really stands out though and really makes it special is the fact that it's got a lot of my quotes from commentary written here on the down tube and all over the bike. There's little bits hidden here and there as well. Letting it all hang out like a fat bird in a bikini. I'd like to point out at this point, that is from a very different period in time. That was the freecaster days, web broadcasting, no TV channels involved. Did you know this, right? Talking of birds, did you know that pigeon is more toxic than asbestos. No, don't eat it, don't go near it, because it's brain tumours. Yeah, it's a fact. No, it's a fact, that is a fact, you can use that. Here's another one I like, as popular as a ginger-haired stepchild. I mean, again, a little bit controversial. Faster than a hoodie with a 3D TV. This is probably one of the most famous quotes that has ever come out of my mouth from commentary. How can Danny sit down with balls that big? Now that's from Sean Free 2011, when Danny Art won by 11 point, I'm gonna say six, nine seconds, nearly 12 seconds. To me, hard to argue, I would say, gotta be the greatest world championship gold winning run of all time, which is a big statement, but so is 12 seconds. And the best thing about that quote is, is that Lance Armstrong saw that clip and put on his Twitter, have you heard this commentator and quoted that quote? So that was like a pucker moment. And, you know, as loud and shouty as that commentary was, and it was mental, me and Pagey were well oiled by the time Danny Art come down. I think I'd probably had about five, six pints and I can't really drink. You know, I'm probably more known for Danny Art's run and that quote perhaps than anything else. So and that, I see that as a really good thing. If you heard that siren there, that might be the Italian authorities looking for me for a speeding fine from 2017 that I didn't even know about, but rather mysteriously is now 586 quid. Yeah, right, of course. Pembury pedals. Oh, you the, That's good, pays to advertise. Probably tell you that little story about him meeting him 20 years ago, shouldn't I? Yeah. I met this man 20 years ago at a bike show. He's been away a little bit, but never taken his eye off the ball and come back with his own company called Pembury. These pedals, I mean, they fit this bike. They're absolutely stunning, British made. Quality is second to none. The thing I like about them though is that they ride a bit differently. They're actually a little bit bigger and I've got size 12 feet. So, so for me, I've never ridden on a bike that gives me such a nice platform. I can tell you about the pedal because it is the one that I've used on my other bikes. Can you imagine being a hypochondriac with what's going on in the world? It's horrendous for me. It's not a good time to be a hypochondriac. It's never been the worst time to be a hypochondriac. On the back here, this is the, I do like this. Big number one, Britain's first World Cup winner, down in, just pointing that out. Caprun 96, seven minutes, 15 seconds. I mean, do you know what I mean? 
Now they're even fitter these days. I mean, imagine racing for seven minutes when you weren't fit back in the day. I'm going to say that that era there, that Caprun era, was when men were men. Do you know what I mean? When downers were downers. Seven minutes I was out of breath for. Outrageous. The most impressive thing about that is that in that seven minutes, 15 seconds, I had a bit of a... I had a, well, it was a, an STD, it wasn't actually a bladder infection, but what it meant was I needed to go to the toilet quite a lot of the time. How I rode for seven minutes and 15 seconds without stopping to use the loo, like, you know, that's almost the most impressive thing. And even says on Wikipedia, I'm probably the only person ever to win a World Cup race with an STD. And afterwards, I had to go to the drugs testing, like, and you have to give a urine sample. And I remember just thinking, oh no man like because there was a little bit of froth on top and yeah so if they tested that i'm not quite sure what they'd have got back probably gonorrhea definitely no performance enhancing substances there's a rumor that it rained and i got lucky to win that race it really really me off and the year after was the only real good year i had at world cup racing because everyone said i'd won because it had rained bit of truth in that so the year after i was on a mission i think i even trained in the winter and I was on like five of the seven World Cup podiums a year after. And the last race was in Caprun in 1997, right? I was teammates with John Tomac. And I'd had a blinding year. And I went into that race with the number two plate on the front of my bike. I've still got that number board. I was second in the World Cup going into the finals. Can you believe that, right? I can't. Anyway, I got to that race. And the night before, my mate had come over from England. And we went to what they called the, um, I think it was called the Boom Bar. And they have this game you have to knock in nails with the back of a hammer. Stayed in there till about three in the morning doing that. I was absolutely wasted. I'd had a massive crash in practice. Um, where the rear wheel locked up through no fault of my own and my foot slipped off the pedal and went into the front wheel and like I went over the bars. I slid down this dirt track at about 60 mile an hour and I literally took all the skin off my back. So seven in the morning, second overall in the World Cup, team manager comes in, I've been out drinking. I'd stayed out a little bit later after the bar as well for another reason that I probably won't say here, but you know, it was a good time. And I remember him coming in and kicking my foot and going, okay, Rob, big day, let's go, let's go. I was like, Ugh. and I remember moving and like being all stuck to the sheets like every other morning that week, I was over it. I was completely done. So I got up at about 11 and I missed all the practice. And I remember I got to the truck 10 minutes before my race run, pretty much before I needed to go up, got the bike, went straight to the top, came in, 60th, 65th in qualifying, not really where I needed to be. Took a load of like isotonic drinks, trying to kill the hangover. Went up for the finals run. I think we qualified and I think we qualified and did the finals all on the same day back then. And I ended up like, I think I really had a good run and ended up 45th. So it wasn't, and I ended up sixth overall in the World Cup. I didn't even get like the top five, get a nice trophy, I missed that. That night, anyway, I went back to the truck. Tomac was there, the truck cleared up. The team manager was so upset off me completely that he knew what I'd been up to and what I'd done so badly because I was hung over that he literally, the whole truck left. They left me there in the car park with my bag. I had to walk back into Caproon Town Centre. I stayed at Palms that night and there was a massive article in MBUK called Divide and Rule with a picture of Tomac looking all mint and a picture of me like with all bandages all over me dying and I mean it, yeah, it didn't go down very well, that, that, maybe don't say it, I don't know, Giant f hated that article anyway. So that is my Vetus dream build brought together by Fat Creations and it is absolutely stunning. I stand by the fact that I'll never ride it, it is literally going to be taken back to my house and chucked in the spare bedroom um, where I visit it quite regularly, after dark of course. Uh, but yeah, thanks very much for watching. And at this point, what was I going to say? Like and subscribe. Yeah, like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. I've done it for a lot of other channels. Uh, like and subscribe. Link into other videos that are not here. And uh, we'll see you soon on my YouTube channel. It's going to be this messy all the time. Get involved. Cheers. <laughs>
Oh, I'm really loud. I ain't even trying either. I'm incredibly loud, ain't I? Huh? I was in a recording studio once and a bloke said, you're the loudest person we've ever had in here and that includes Brian Blessed at his best. It's because I'm partially deaf or something. I don't know. Well, I don't know. I don't feel loud to myself. Imagine what people have heard me saying about them. That's the one thing that worries me. Three mile away people are picking up on a conversation in my kitchen. You know what I mean? 